the next hormone that I'll talk about is the, are the estrogens in women. Mm -hmm. So, and, and actually these same estrogens exist in men and we talk about good estrogens and bad estrogens and the fact of the matter is that there's over 20 estrogens, probably over 100 estrogens when you look at all the breakdown products that are possible. Right. And it's very clear that in some particular balance they're extremely protective. What happens over time, however, is that the estrogens that cause more strokes, heart attacks, and cancers go up precipitously because they're produced in the fat. And mm. the ones that protect our body go down. So which ones are we talking about? We can talk about the top three that people really talk about. One of them is estrone, E1, mm -hmm. estradiol, E2, estriol, E3. The difference between these is just alcohol groups. One alcohol group, two alcohol group, three alcohol group, mm -hmm. okay? So the body is generally heavy in E2 and E3 in our premenopausal years in women. So 80% of your estrogens are coming from the ovaries. They're in the form of E2 and E3, known to decrease the incidence of strokes and heart attacks and cancers. Mm -hmm. But as we get to the 50s, that 80% becomes 10%. E1, which is the one that causes more strokes, heart attacks, and cancers, and that applies to men and women, goes from 10% all the way up to 80%. So by the time we're in our 50s, the balance is going to be weighted towards the unfavorable estrogens. When they did the Women's Health Initiative study, there's two things that they did that skewed the results. Hmm. One was that they chose conjugated equine estrogen, which is an estrone, E1. So they took women from who... From horse urine. From horse urine. So they took women who were already 80% E1 and gave them more E1. Mm. They also took women and instead of giving progesterone, they gave progesterone with an entire molecule on it, which is, consists of carbon, ketone, and methyl groups. We now know from five very large studies that any time you use that form of progesterone, you're going to get, and it's called progestin, an increase in strokes, heart attacks, and cancers, anywhere from five to eight fold. So their selection of hormones was just poor. When you look at the largest study done now in the world, the largest study is using E2 and E3 transdermally and progesterone without that extra molecule. Mm -hmm. That study has 88,000 women in it, as opposed to the Women's Health Initiative study, which had 16,000. It was published by the French in 2010, and it showed a decreased incidence of breast cancer. Mm. So we know that the body, when it's re restored to optimal levels with the things that it's missing identically, mm -hmm. what we call bioidentical or molecularly identical hormones, it actually is protective uh, at physiologically protective levels. So when we're trying to achieve these levels, as an example, estradiol, mm -hmm. the reproductive levels are going to be 200 to 500 in a woman, but we're going to balance them to the 50 to 80 range because that's the range at which you start to see protection of brain, bone, and heart. They don't need the reproductive range anymore. So when we're doing our hormones, we're basically trying to put it at the where we know the protective effects start. So you don't have to get them as high as the level of 100 to 500, but right. 50 to 80. Right. Which and in some women, it may be 100. It's very okay. easy to tell because we monitor something called urine and telepeptides. And urine and telepeptides and actually tell you how much bone is being lost is directly correlated with estradiol efficacy. So. If I have a lady who has an, a urine NTX, which is above 35, say it's in the hundreds, and I get her estradiol level up to 50, mm -hmm. and the level drops to 50, but I want it at 35, I'm gonna bring that estradiol level up higher. Sure. It directly correlates how much right. bone you're losing with estradiol.